This show is part of the RetroZap.com podcast network. And welcome everybody to episode 37 of the Animaniacast. Every night before retreat, we order out for lunch and meat. And welcome to the Animaniacast. We are the only podcast that is dedicated to the animated series, The Animaniacs. Here we explore the series episode by episode, revisiting all the cultural references and gags that we can find, and in the end, we give the episode a Water Tower rating. I am Joey, and joining me once again are my co-hosts, Nathan. Hi, Nama Ant. It's an anagram for I am Nathan. Oh, there we go. (laughs) And across the country is Kelly. Hello. Hello. Well, today we are off. We're, We're off to the army. And, mm-hmm. and uh, various other parts of the armed service. <laughs> and uh, in a very uh, uh, yeah, militaristic episode. I don't know what yeah. to say about this one in one word. But what do you guys think? Uh, it, you know, this is a, it's a good episode. If, if, in a few words, Nathan, what would you say? This episode means war, nurse. <laughs> and, <laughs> and Kelly, what would, you th- what would you say about this episode in a few words? Oh, it it made me think of Young and Anna Jones Chronicles. Ah, uh, yes, me too. <laughs> <laughs> and Nathan, tell us, when did this episode, episode 37, which features Dodo Boys, Boot Camping, and General Beauregard, when, pray tell, did this episode first premiere? Well, Joey, this per- first premiered on Tuesday, November 9th, 1993, which of course is a huge day in hip-hop history. Oh. Uh, Wu-Tang Clan released their debut album, Enter the Wu-Tang Clan, or oh. 36 Chambers, mm-hmm. and the already legendary A Tribe Called Quest dropped their third studio album, Midnight Marauders. Well, that's kind of cool. Yeah. They're, they're, hey, they're, they're, they're both... So it's like a historical day for all you hip-hop fans. Yeah. It's not me, but there you go. <laughs> but for everyone else, you know what you were doing. You were buying this album and right? watching Animaniacs yeah. at the same time. You were pl- probably playing Wu-Tang Clan while wow. watching yeah. Animaniacs. I bet they match up like really oh, well. Oh, like the, uh, like Pink Floyd and mm-hmm. uh, Wizard of Oz? Mm-hmm. Okay, go ahead and try that, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure it's going to have some interesting stuff. Yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> well. before we get started, I think we better mention the variant verse that started off this one, which we forgot to mention last time. Mm-hmm. It's one of those like little references that I'm like, oh, I forgot to, to talk about it when yeah. I'm editing it. But luckily, they repeat these variant verses from time to time. And today was Eisenhower Mamie. Eisenhower Mamie. I was looking at the closed captioning on Netflix and it actually said Eisenhower Mamie. Oh. So the person who did closed captioning did not uh, get the gag that he's pointing to Ike Eisenhower, the former president, and mm-hmm. that maybe Eisenhower sitting right next to him was, the, of course, the first lady, Eisenhower, uh-huh. comma, Mamie. So there we go. <laughs> anyway, but it matches in right there because, of course, Eisenhower was a general during uh, World War Two, And mm-hmm. uh, in this, we're going to uh, deal with, uh, well, you know the war and stuff like that yeah. so speaking of war let's talk about the first one which talks about the great war world war one and it is called dodo boys this is maurice lamarche the voice of squid the pigeon from the good feathers and animaniacs and you're listening to the animani cast don't hit me pesto Dodo Boys was a story by John P. McCann and Tom Ruger. It was written by John P. McCann, and it was directed by Greg Reyna. And Kelly, uh, what can you tell us about uh, Dodo Boys? The 
episode or, or segment starts in uh, France, I think, in 1918. And, of course, as soon as I saw that, I'm like, oh, it's like the Young Indiana Jones Chronicles, which uh, shared the, the adventures of a young Indiana Jones during <laughs> World War One. Mm-hmm. And um, this episode in particular sort of really reminded me of that because the good feathers are messengers yes. in the war and, and there were a few episodes where young Indy played uh, he, or he was a, a courier and drove around on a, a motorcycle and I remember that one looked really really cool with, with really good <laughs> hair um, focus and, focus and I'm, I'm getting derailed okay um, <laughs> so so it's a, some of the best episodes, anyways. So, uh, so, so it really reminded me of that, and, and you know the trenches and and everything. So the the good feathers have been asked to send a, a message, and so they roll up a little you know piece of paper and put it on uh, put it on the, their legs, and they're having to get through this battlefield. And Pesto is in a particularly bad mood in this episode. Yes, everything that they say, he's like, what? Are you calling me a hero? Are you saying I'm a giant sandwich? You know, what? What? That's it. And because even, bef- even before they were like, you're in a really bad mood. I, I was noticing it, too, and, and mm-hmm. thought, what is up with him? I, I guess war makes him cranky. Or, <laughs> I don't know. But um, so they, they end up getting blown up and shot and a million different things by the end of the episode. And blow up a blimp, which I I'm, I'm, thought was kind of dramatic, <laughs> and uh, yes. it was it was actually a pretty cool cool episode and um, lots of action. And they they finally delivered the message. Only it's it's a little too late. Mm-hmm. But it was a good thing that but, they were late, right? Yeah, yeah. Because I guess the whole thing was if they did deliver the message on time, then. Mm-hmm. The army would have retreated and then gone right into the enemy lines or something like that. Yeah, they would have, you know, the enemy would have progressed further. Yes. Towards their goal. But (laughs) yeah. Well, it was a it was a it was a nice episode of uh, Good Feathers. Mm -hmm. I've I've watched it a a few times, you know, to, to get as many of the different references that I could. And like every Good Feathers cartoon, there are multiple references to uh various celebrities mm-hmm. uh because every time they have like a kind of a an expression uh, a curse or something like that sometimes or you know, what's the what's the uh inter uh oh gosh what's the what's the time what's the kind of word what's the time means? no what's the word <laughs> that means like wow um exclamation okay well <laughs> whenever they have an exclamation <laughs> they have they mention things like uh uh Topo Jijo. Tip Topo Jijo. Topo Jijo. Topo. Santa Claus. <laughs> uh, or they mentioned Mario Lanza <laughs> or uh, De Crescendo or Mona Lisa. Mm-hmm. Uh, no, Topo Jijo. Say it again, Nathan. Popo Jijo. Not Popo. Popo Jijo. Well, Topo Jijo no. was before our time anyway, so it's, it's okay know. that you don't know how to pronounce it. I just it. know it from Santa Claus. Yeah. <laughs> well, Topo Gijo was uh, a little a puppet mouse kind of. He would go and he would uh, he would talk to Ed Sullivan. He was on the Ed Sullivan show quite a bit, and I seem to remember him on some NBC special of talking to the girls from Facts of Life or something at one hmm. point in the eighties. That's all I remember. Topo Gijo, Mario Lanza. I had no idea who that was. Mar- yeah. Mario Lanza was a a tenor. Uh, you know, I, he you can look up a bunch of his songs that he sings on YouTube. <laughs> De crescendo just means to decrease volume in singing. Okay. And uh Mona Lisa, well, I have no she idea. She smiles. Yeah, she smiles awkwardly at people, <laughs> right? Um <laughs> but uh th- there's there's a few other, you know, quick references. Um first of all, let's talk about the the title itself, uh Dodo Boys. Um a doughboy is not just the Pillsbury doughboy. But actually, a doughboy was uh, the term that was used for uh, military members. Uh, usually, a, a, I think it was American soldiers were known as doughboys. Hmm. And uh, checking out the always factual Wikipedia page here, it's, it looks like there's not really any clear origin of why the heck they called them doughboys to begin with. Um, I 
So I don't really know why. They just mm-hmm. with all that pack and that you know, with all that stuff on them, they kinda look chubbier perhaps, and maybe that was why, but I don't really know why. So there you go. <laughs> yeah, and then it's dodo birds is a mix of Yes. Yeah. So it's a very punny title yeah, right there. Funny. <laughs> funny punny. Uh he mentions Mia Sparrow right there. Uh, uh and uh, of course that's a parody or a reference to uh Mia Farrow. Oh, okay. Who is actress Mia Farrow, who was born way after um, <laughs> World War I uh, and is still alive today. And the only other uh, couple references that I that I could really find were one uh, one was the, the music. Um, they, they play a variant, sort of, of uh, It's a Long Way to Tipperary, which was a song that... Uh, was a song sung by many uh, soldiers during World War One, so you can hear that song in the background in some of the scenes. And there was a oh yeah, one more thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, did you hear the reference to the movie Big at the very end? No, it was buried. No. And I, if I didn't have the closed captioning on, I would totally have missed it. But at the end, uh, he's he's saying, you know, you calling me big? You know, you calling me? You know, he's call me fat and all that stuff mm-hmm. so he goes i'll give you big i'll give you tom hanks too bad we didn't get any medals but i guess they just don't have any big enough for us good feathers big what do you mean by big are you trying to say i'm fat some kind of roly-poly chicken leg for your matzo ball soup a chunk of fat meant to up your cholesterol level oh no i just meant that we're like big shots you know heavy hitters oh now i'm a heavy hitter I'll give you a heavy hit in the head. Here, take that. I'll give you big. Oh, I'll give you a ah! <laughs> Nice. So, <laughs> uh, yeah, the movie Big, of course, starring Tom Hanks. And uh, there you go. There's, a, there's some cool, cool little uh, references and everything. But there's also a lot of cool gags in this. Mm-hmm. Um, what do you guys think? What are some of your favorite moments, some favorite gags uh, uh, that stood out in this episode? Um, Kelly, what, let's start with you. What do you think? Well, I, I did like Pesto's uh, rantings because <laughs> it, it was quite extensive in this episode. Uh-huh. And um, Yeah, Bobby even mentions it that, you know, he's just – he's. <laughs> There's something wrong with him this episode. Yeah, I like that he says, this episode. (laughs) Are you sure this is going to work? How do you know it's going to work? Listen, you banana-faced toucan. You've been in a particularly bad mood this entire episode. Now get squit. (laughs) Yeah, in in particular, he woke up on the wrong side of the bed, I guess. And um, I I liked the the sequence where they're they're flying up into the, like, uh, trying to get the plane to go up into the mm-hmm. sunlight and where it gets i guess blinded and doesn't see the the blimp until the last minute i thought that was rather cinematic yeah it, it did and look really pretty cool that. yeah and of course i like the joke right there with fly towards the sun follow me where are we going Toward the sun it's in outer space we'll never make it <laughs> yeah um, there's other little things going on in, in this one. Like, um, at the very beginning, you see the generals were all fighting. They were mm-hmm. like saying about, uh, uh, you know, we have to go here, we have to go there. And then one of them, Nathan, yeah, you yeah that was my saying? favorite. Yeah. But he's like, <gasps> so-and-so took my ha- helmet, sir. Make him give it back. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> Situation is great. Enemy pressure is increasing. My took my helmet, sir. Make him give it back. I guess you go to the helmet, sir. Helmet, I give It reminded me very much as a teacher of just like kids. Like, Mister, Mister, so and so did this, so and so did that. It's like yeah. just go away. So I felt really sorry for the general right there, whose name, by the way, was General Store. <laughs> and of course, at the very end, he meets the American general, whose name was General Admission, I mm. believe. So brilliant attack, General Store. Thank you, General Admission. I was able to sweep the enemy from the field, dust his flanks, and wash and wax his rear echelons. So, again, so cute puns right there. Nathan, what about you? What are some moments that you really like? Well, of course, yeah, the helmet, uh, make him give it back. But then the uh, when uh, he first gets the jewelry on his leg. Uh, just, oh, yeah. I'm making fun of uh, Squid, so. Don't Squid's new jewelry look adorable? <laughs> <laughs> He's a regular Mia Sparrow! <laughs> <laughs> 
Well, you um, know the the carrier pigeons. You know this this was sort of historically accurate. I mean, to, the carrier pigeons, as we mentioned earlier, were in fact used during World War One mm-hmm. to carry messages, and uh, you know, they would basically, of course. I mean, hey, I, I'm sure they've they've had to have been used for hundreds of years. Yeah, they were used in the Assassin's Creed video game. I mean, it has to be right. So, That's historically accurate. <laughs> exactly, everything in that game. Uh, but I, you know, apparently they were obviously used in World War One, and I think even a little bit in World War Two from time to time. Hmm. Um, and they even gave medals to some carrier pigeons. Wow, who uh, who did a, a great job? I'm so, guessing they never used carrier cats, though. No, no carrier <laughs> cats. They they were. They're they, so much cleaner, though. <laughs> but would they do what you wanted them to do? I don't know. Yeah, right. Uh, but I but from what I remember, um, just in reading and stuff about World War One, I, I mean. Yeah, the, if you saw you know pigeons going across, you, you would want to shoot them down, much mm-hmm. like you know in this episode, because yeah, you don't want to get the, a message to the other side. You're right, Bobby. Any of those miserable egg sucking enemies show up, I'll whack them into another time zone. I mean it. I'll really whack them. There was this giant no man's land of just nothingness. You know, they show it in in this episode of just keep our battlefield clean, you know, clean. There's a little sign hmm. on on it. But it was essentially, you know, practically impossible to get out. This is I'm going back into social studies teacher mode right here, folks, so <laughs> forgive me. But World War One was one of the more difficult wars to fight because for the for the longest time, I mean, you talk about like hundreds and hundreds of years of war warfare. You know, you would have one army line up in a straight line, and the other army line up in the other side, and you would march towards one another. And the th- and well, they kind of wanted to do that in this war as well. You get out there into the fields of Europe, and you want to march towards each other and mm-hmm. see who wins the battlefield. The problem is with the invention of all these. Wonderful uh, automatic weapons such as machine guns, yeah, and gas, and gas, and... and all this stuff that you know you couldn't really fight that way anymore, and so people essentially hunkered down into these, you know, trenches where you would just get disease and mm-hmm. and filth and and just terrible stuff right there. And if you dared get out there into no man's land, well, just like the good feathers, you would be. You know, blasted and smushed and who knows what else. <laughs> so, not good news. Yeah. Oh, pesto. What's that sign say? How do I know what it says? Am I a dictionary? Is the word thesaurus printed on me? Am I some sort of vast living pool of knowledge here for the sole purpose of enlightening you? I just asked, what's it say? What's the matter with you, pesto? <laughs> It says, thanks for dropping in. Hope you had a blast. I almost thought that uh, Bobby was about to curse. (laughs) They always do a very good job, you know, putting in the word coup or, you know, all all that. But at one point, Bobby uh, calls, I think, Pesto. Again, he he stands up to Pesto a lot in these episodes, which surprises me because it didn't really happen that much in the first couple. But at one point, he calls, I think, Pesto a fat fowl. And at first, I thought he was going to say something else. It did perk my ears up and go, whoa, whoa, whoa. Listen, you fat fowl, I'll whack your wings off and make it the smallest ostrich on the planet. I mean, the animation was pretty decent in this one, too. Yeah, and well, like uh, Kelly was saying, that whole final dramatic scene was really cool where, where they're chasing him in the big explosion. So that was really yeah, some cool cinematography. I, I think the explosion would be... A l- I, I, I have to check on that because the Zeppelin's exploding with the hydrogen and stuff. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Well, that's. I'll leave that for the scientists. It's to... in a cartoon. It must be true. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, it was a good. It was a nice Good Feathers cartoon. I think it was definitely one of the definitely definitely one of the <laughs> better <laughs> Good Feather cartoons that we've seen to date, mm-hmm. which was cool to see. Some heroes we turned out to be. Are you calling me a hero? I was just saying that we're supposed to deliver this message and be heroes, you know? No, I don't know. You tell me. Are you saying I'm a hero? That I'm some kind of large sandwich filled with lunch meat and lettuce sent here to nourish you? Oh, pesto, I just meant we're not the heroes we thought we'd be. That's it! Come here! Oh, come on! Hey, guys! Come here! 
Well, let's move on to our next cartoon, which is called Boot Camping. Boot Camping was written by Nicholas Hollander and John P. McCann, and it was directed by Mr. Rusty Mills. Nathan, what the heck happens in boot camping? The Warners are going to summer camp, but it's not actually summer camp. It's boot camp, which they think is just a special summer camp for boots. But uh, (laughs) (laughs) they uh, they're in basic training and they end up uh, really angry, uh, like like making the drill sergeant pretty mad and confused and. It's uh, lots of funny things, and then I guess they actually do go camping at the end, so it's <laughs> yeah, the, it all works out. Well, the drill sergeant f- hits the ground. And I, mean, I just, I think something happened in his head where... <laughs> Come on, guys, let's go camping! Build a campfire, make s'mores, sing songs, Come on! He became very flamboyant. And he changed his clothes, and he's like, we're gonna, you know, do your ears hang low, do you? <laughs> He hit the ground harder than Don Cheadle, you know, in Civil War. He yeah. was just boom. He somehow, like, stopped himself right before, though, too. He, I don't know what he did. But air brakes. Yeah, he used the air brakes, and then, <laughs> but it wasn't enough. <laughs> Changes of personality is a sign of a concussion, I believe. <laughs> it is. So, <laughs> so, hopefully they get that checked out. They don't let him just <laughs> fall asleep. With the, <laughs> Well, this one was pretty good, and I totally forgot about this cartoon. This is not one of the the Warner's cartoons that I really think of right away, but I found mm-hmm. this one pretty enjoyable, despite the animation, which was yeah, okay. Yeah, animation it. was less than desirable at some points. Yeah, so they're going to Camp Peeny Wow Wow. I think that's how you pronounce it. Yeah, I didn't know. A very know. suspicious name. <laughs> and I'm not. I can see why they thought it was a summer. Like it doesn't sound like a boot camp. Well, the camp does sound like those kind of uh, camps that, like, I don't know, like Ernest goes to camp or yeah, something. Like, exactly. Camp Peeny Wow Wow. Well, just uh, like Pee Wee Wow Wow. Yeah. <laughs> yeah so Pee Wee Herman goes to camp. <laughs> um, but there was there were some cool little references here and there. I mean, Dot was wearing a plucky duck life preserver around mm-hmm. her, which looked cute. They mentioned uh, boot camp and. Dot talks about how much she loves, like Imelda Marcos, she loves boots. Uh, again, Imelda Marcos, we mentioned her before, and I believe Hello Nice Warners was our first Imelda Marcos reference yeah, of the so. of the series. But Imelda Marcos, uh, former first lady, I believe, the, of the Philippines. And, uh, well, long story short, she had a lot, a lot of shoes. <laughs> so, and uh, uh, they mentioned, a, like, a even a reference to... Uh, to Descartes, I believe. Yeah. yeah, they they say we we think, therefore we are the Warners. Yeah, so I thought that was cool. Yeah, so a little a little culture mixed in with this one right here. Um, they also have a, a reference here to a a very obscure Warner Brothers cartoon character. We don't see a lot of uh, classic Warner Brothers cartoon characters in the Animaniacs. They, <laughs> unlike Tiny Toons, uh, they didn't really show Bugs Bunny and Plucky Duck, or no, Daffy Duck, or even Plucky Duck, <laughs> or yeah, any of those guys. Uh, they stuck to their, their cast of characters. So there was a character called Snafu, uh, and they who was getting a haircut uh, okay. you know, with the barber, with Floyd the Barber. Floyd the Barber, of course, from the Andy Griffith show. Yeah. Uh, and Snafu is getting his hair shaved, and they even play the Snafu theme, which is wah, 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 wah. In case you didn't know, Snafu, of course, stands for Situation Normal All uh, Fouled Up. Uh-huh. <laughs> Something like that. Anyway, <laughs> uh, but there's a bunch of those Snafu cartoons on YouTube. Um, I wouldn't look at them unless you're going to look at them as uh, with a historic I because they are they were shown just for members of the military at the time during World War II and they show you, you know very uh, offensive stereotypes of mm. Japanese, German, you name it, Italians, whoever our ne- our enemy was. Yeah, you know we're World War make II. Fun of them, and we're gonna do every stereotype. Exactly, and there's even like some very risque stuff that. Uh, like there was like, uh, well, there was like pinups uh, in one that I was watching, and they're just showing like topless women in this Warner hmm. Brothers cartoon, and I'm like, what the heck is going? What am I watching? <laughs> 
but they are online on YouTube if you're if you're so inclined to to watch that kind of stuff. So, uh, of course, Floyd the barber right there is having this whole thing with uh, Wacko. Mm-hmm, that uh, was fun. Yeah, with the paint and stuff on his head, and taking off your hat. Yes, <laughs> and uh, he he mentions at the very end that at least he's not as naughty as Opie. Mm. And of course, Opie uh, on the show was played by Ronnie Howard, but is now known as Ron Howard. Who is a director? Yes, has directed many good films, and yeah, Arrested Development. Right? He he was the voice of the of the narrator That's what it is. in Arrested I Development. Like, I just and I'm know sure he, that. I'm sure he's a, a vo- vo- you know maybe Something. directed an episode or two. Ron Howard directed uh, Willow and yes. Apollo thirteen and the all the uh, all the uh, the uh, Da Vinci Code movies mm. that have been out have been directed mm-hmm. by Ron Howard. So there you yep. go. Let's see. They mentioned that <laughs> he mentions I'm going to make you guys agents of total destruction. From now on, I'm training you to become agents of total destruction. But we don't want to be mailmen. We'd rather work for a living. So this is an innocent, more innocent time. <laughs> yeah. Where uh, and there's could, always been a joke, kind of of like disgruntled mailman. Yeah. It's been. But this is back. I uh, you know back in the '90s and everything. You know. It was more funny back then. Yeah, because mailmen <laughs> would actually, you know, you'd have, hear these stories about mailmen uh, being becoming quote unquote disgruntled and mm-hmm. actually shooting people in their in the post office and everything. So, to it kind of just is a sign of the times of the, when this cartoon was made in the early '90s that you could joke like that. Yeah. Um. So there you go. <laughs> Let's see. But overall, I mean, that's that's uh, there's a. That's pretty much it. I mean, when it comes to references, there are, again, lots of uh, cool gags. Um, Nathan, what do you think? What are some of the things you like? In I this like the uh, get in line. Fall in! Get up! Now fall in! Get up and fall in! Is this part of our camp initiation? Frankly, we'd prefer the spanking machine. Get up and get in line! Well, why didn't you say that in the first place? Uh, Kelly, what about you? I like when Dot spray painted her shoes pink. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. <laughs> and uh, of course, we do find out what the Warners are. From now on, this army will be your home. I will be your mother, father, aunt, and uncle. A family. Stop that, you, you, you! What are you anyway? Infested with fleas. <laughs> Um, and the very end, it did remind me a little bit, um, I'm, I'm sure it wasn't, you know, trying to steal the gag, but it was very reminiscent of, uh, Who Framed Roger Rabbit when they're falling, falling in mm-hmm. the thing and they're like, we took your laundry out and both Eddie, Eddie Valiant got a tire in his and mm-hmm. the, the drill sergeant in this one has like a inflatable, inflatable life preserver yeah, or something like that. It's not that. Plucky Duck though. So I thought that was... Yeah, that's true. There's a different one. I did like the, uh, the whole throwing the pin. Instead of the grenade scene, it's yes. very funny. Uh, <laughs> Just pull the pin and throw. Throw the grenade! You said throw the pin. I meant pull the pin and throw the grenade! I'm all confused. You do it. I was I was showing this episode, uh, you know, in the in the library a few days ago, and that that little scene did get a joke, a uh, yeah, little laugh. I it mean. got a joke. Too. It got a joke. <laughs> that joke <laughs> got a laugh. Ooh, even better. <laughs> and then, of course, you know, there's even like in that it, there's great background stuff in this episode mm. uh, by the background artists. Uh, you're mentioning the grenade pin thing right there. There's a bucket that says "Earth First, Recycle Your." used grenade pins here and it shows like a bucket yeah that's you know full of grenade pins everywhere uh and then when they're getting all this stuff like and they're going to the army supply room uh they show them uh walking past all these different signs and everything one of them shows like diapers <laughs> <laughs> and another box is full of tattoos <laughs> <laughs> um mm-hmm. there's a there's a crate uh sign uh when all the you know recruits get off the bus and they all look like members of like the who or something like yeah. that from the 1970s so i'm assuming this might this episode if i were to place it in a timeline 
might be in the 1960s, perhaps, around Vietnam. I would think so. I, yeah, I was thinking Forrest Gump when I was... Yeah. So I was like... One of the signs says free haircuts, you know, something like that is, is a way. Um, I did pause it every now and then just to see, like, the the details of the background characters to see if I could see any, oh, I don't know, caricatures of writers or something like that mm-hmm. in the line. And the one ups- weird thing that I saw was one of the people that is standing in the drill line for the army is dressed as a sailor. So hmm. <laughs> there's one guy who's obviously, and he, maybe he just decided the Navy was not for him. He and got he was, off the wrong bus. <laughs> no, <I don't> know. <laughs> um, but overall, I thought it was a pretty cute cartoon. Um, mm-hmm. And again, one that I had not really remembered in the past. Okay, well, let's get over to our last quick cartoon, which is another chicken boo, and it is General Boo Regard. General Boo Regard was written by Deanna Oliver and John P. McCann. It was directed by Alfred Gimeno, and essentially, this is uh, this is the Battle of uh, Appomattox. Is that that's how we pronounce it, right, Kelly? I'm asking my Civil War. You're my Civil War. Uh, <laughs> yeah, self. I mean, I, yeah. that's the way I've always okay. said it. Or it is Appomattox. <laughs> okay, so Appomattox is right before the the one of the biggest last battles of the Civil War. The Confederates are all talking about this new general that's going to come in and save them, and uh, you know he he faced off with General Grant and all this stuff, and it turns out that he is nothing more than a giant chicken. What? Uh, yeah, it's true. It's Chicken <laughs> Boo. Who they call General Boo Regard is a character named Colonel Sanders, mm-hmm. uh, okay. of course, who would really love Gen- who I'm sure once he found out that it was a giant chicken. That's that probably he, why he, he saw his calling. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, Colonel Sanders, from what I remember hearing, was never actually, of course, talking about K- Kentucky Fried Chicken right yeah. here, um, which, hey, there was a. There's two Kentucky Fried Chicken references in this episode. They really? mentioned like we're going to be Kentucky Fried Pigeons up here in the first uh, cartoon oh, that's right. on the blimp. So hey, and now Colonel Sanders, I really with a giant chicken. Yeah, I'm really hungry for chicken. Now. I've got to go get them <laughs> after recording. Anyway, uh, Colonel Sanders, uh, I don't think was actually a real military colonel. I think it was one of those uh, honorary things that they they give to certain folks. Hmm. Uh, so anyway. Yeah, Colonel Sanders was not really a, a Confederate uh, soldier, at least not the one we know of. Lieutenant Colonel Sanders, at your service, General. General Beauregard, we done here tell you whoop General Grant at Shiloh. We done here tell you be General Sherman in Atlanta. I done here tell you're a chicken. <gasps> you yellow belly, two-bit Yankee-loving, cotton-brain boy. <laughs> he didn't mean that, so he's just hungry, and hungry men say crazy things. They're out there in the battlefield, they're about to fight, and uh, a cannonball shoots right by Chicken Boo's head. He ducks, his hat falls off, and then they all see that he's a chicken. Ha! He's a chicken! Ha! <laughs> 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 told you that guy's a chicken. A chicken big enough to feed an army. And they all jump on top of him. But luckily for Chicken Boo, uh, he's able to escape the north and the south and gets away. Yeah, it just uh, always seems like everyone like wants to get him. I don't understand. <laughs> well, at least this time they actually, <laughs> they didn't just kick him out. You know what yeah. I mean? He he was almost, he, it was the most dangerous situation for yeah, Chicken Boo. I know. I was <laughs> getting um, worried. Yeah. Uh, well, it was a cute one. Uh, really, the uh, the only cultural reference that I can really think of is well, there's a big sign. Or, you know, we have Clark Gable, mm-hmm. a caricature of Clark Gable who is appearing, and of course Kelly. We all know Clark Gable s- starred in the movie Gone with the Wind. Ding ding ding. Yes, that's right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and uh, Kelly, you're again. I've I've I'm not a Gone with the Wind expert. Uh, played Rhett Butler, right? Mm-hmm. Okay. And, and he was not a member of the Union Army, uh, but a privateer, and then uh, became a soldier uh, in the movie for the the South. Correct? 
Right, right. The character, I, I, I like to sort of compare him to Han Solo a little bit because uh, basically he was a blockade runner, mm-hmm. and um, would, uh, you know, he had ships that would, you know, bring in uh, supplies because railroads and things were, were cut off, and so he he was basically making money off of the end of uh, 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 a type of, of civilization, and. Um, it was just, I mean, smart, I guess. Uh, he yeah. went a lot of friends doing it. But, uh, <laughs> you know, he, he saw opportunity and he's like, well, you know, I mean, I made some money. And uh, But I think his conscience got to him a little bit. And so he decided to fight for a lost cause. and um, But at least to say, you know, and tell himself that, yeah, I joined the army kind of at the last minute. But, you know, I can at least say I fought. And um, so he wasn't just you know, sitting in bars, drinking away while the war went on around. Yeah. You know, I've never got that comparison between him and Han Solo before. I've never heard that before, I should say, but I um, totally get it. Yeah. yeah I can, it makes more sense to me now. dialogue. Um, <laughs> some of it made it into Empire, but it's it's really evident in the, the Empire Strikes Back movie novelization. Um, there's dialogue between Han and Leia and Scarlet and Rhett in the film that is almost identical. Wow. Mm. Cool. It, literally, I mean, it's it's. I I read the book, um, the no, the Empire Strikes Back novel. I'm like, wait a minute, I know exactly. Like, this, this, <laughs> this, this, this is very familiar to me. This is plagiarism. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it's some um, you know, big movie buffs like me just get excited when I can find things that kind of, uh, kind of correlate. And I've read places where you know, I, not a lot of places, but enough to be like, oh, I wonder if it's actually true or. You know, Lucas may have been somewhat inspired by, by the like the characters. Um, you know, it's because it's sort of a love triangle kind of thing, and um, he he's obviously a fan of old films because I've, yeah. I've been to Lucas Film and he's got this amazing collection of, of old movie posters that are just absolutely breathtaking. Right, which should be in the Museum of Narrative Art at, uh, in Los Angeles in a few years. So that'll be yeah. Exciting. It seems like they finally are going to start building that, or yeah. you know, finally found a place for it. Nobody wanted it, which is amazing. Yeah, we'll take it, but it's in L.A. It's close yeah. enough. I'll, I'll, Atlanta will take it. I mean, well, <laughs> you know, if we weren't too busy building Falcons stadiums in the middle of like a really super crowded city already, but <laughs> well, that's 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 neither here nor there. <laughs> Well, this is the, the the Chicken Boo episode. Back to Chicken Boo. <laughs> Animaniacs. Yay. Uh, yeah. uh, what, I'm what, at Brave Stadium anyway. I get my sports <laughs> references and stuff. Don't, you can ask me about movies all day long. Don't ask me about sports. <laughs> yeah, me too. Don't, don't. What is football? Um, Nathan, <laughs> what do you think? What do you think about today, uh, the Chicken Boo one right here? It's, that we a, have? it's a fun Chicken Boo. It's probably not my favorite Chicken Boo of all Chicken Boos, but... Uh... <laughs> It was still enjoyable. I, so, and Kelly, what do you think? I, I thought it was funny. <laughs> I thought, you know, I, I thought it was it was it was one of the cuter ones. I think. Yeah, I really like the animation in this one. Yeah, it was interesting. The the animation of them uh, chasing to you know like the the Confederate soldiers. Uh, I just thought the lip sync, the animation in general in this one was was quite good. So uh, yeah. I just don't like the 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 thought of thinking that uh, Chicken Boo was in the South. It's like no, that's not the right side. No, <laughs> anyway. Wait. Oh, nothing, nothing. <laughs> no, I always get conflicted because it's like, well, I I, I live in the South. Yes. I'm a Southerner, but of course I don't like condone why the South was fighting or, or anything exactly. like that. So it's kind of like a you know conflict, an inner conflict. I think a lot of Southerners experience is like, well, we we live in the South, but. Yeah, I, yeah, I just wish they could have figured else. it out without war, and then. <laughs> well, Chicken Boo ended up starting the bat, the final battle right there, didn't he? He, you started the battle Appomattox because they were all just fighting over him. So mm-hmm. there you go. Speak- well, and I don't think you mentioned. I mean, there actually was a, a General Beauregard. Oh yeah, I didn't. Yeah, that's right. War. So what? So and he was in the South, right, General Beauregard? Yes. Well, there you go. Well, I didn't know that. I'm imagining oh, okay. that's where they got that. When I think of Beauregard, I just think of the Muppet. I just think of There's the Muppet <laughs> Beauregard. I have a friend, Beauregard. So. Oh, that's right. It takes a while to get to know the town. Well, how long have you lived in London? All my life. 
How come you don't have an English accent? Hey, I'm lucky to have a driver's license. Roger. 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 <laughs> well, now let's go ahead and uh, get over to our water tower rating. <laughs> So what do you guys think, Nathan? Well, how many water towers out of five water towers would you give this episode? Ooh, okay, um, I am going to go with three and a half. All right, why is that? Um, I enjoyed them all. I don't know if there was a lot of like quotable lines necessarily. Mm-hmm. Um, and the animation in the Warner's one was a little off at times. So okay, but uh, other than that, it was fun. Uh, enjoyable episode three and a half all right and kelly what about you i'm also gonna go with three and a half i i thought overall it was cute i kind of like the ones where they they have a a cohesive theme it just makes it a little bit more interesting sometimes and um i but i i don't find this episode particularly memorable Mm -hmm. it's one i i know i've seen them these episodes before or this episode before and it, it was familiar, but I, I wouldn't have been able to quote any of the lines or know exactly what was going to happen next because I just, it's, I probably only saw it once, maybe twice. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, well, I'm going to, I'm going to mix it up. I'm going to give it, I'm going to give it four, um, which kind of surprises me because, um, yeah, like, like you were saying, like it wasn't one of the ones that I automatically remember, but I think just the novelty of it that I hadn't. It, you know, seen it many times kind of stood out for me. And, uh, I just, like you were saying, the cohesive theme, the gags were good. I, the only thing I think it was missing was if it had a, a cool song from the Warners, it would have, you know, been mm-hmm. even better. Um, but, uh, two out of the three segments had really good animation. Yeah. The Warners one was a little lacking, but it still yeah. wasn't bad. animation. yeah, there was still good animation in that bad animation. The, yeah, exactly. <laughs> There's still good stuff going on. So little element. So overall, a very, very good episode. And, uh, yeah, there we go. So let's go ahead and get over to our water, not, not water tower. Right? I give it three and a half water towers. <laughs> <laughs> Let's go ahead and get over to our poll results from last week. Hello everyone, this is your announcer here with the Animaniacs Twitter poll results. I am on a whirlwind vacation. I have been everywhere. Well, at least a lot of places anyway. Starting in the United States, then going to Canada, then off to Mexico and Panama, and uh, then let's see, I went to Haiti, Jamaica, Peru, uh, Republic, Dominican, uh, Cuba, Caribbean, uh, Greenland, El Salvador too, uh, Puerto Rico, Colombia, uh, Venezuela, Honduras, Guyana, and still uh, Guatemala, Bolivia, then Argentina, and uh, Ecuador, Chile, and Brazil. Well, now I'm in Costa Rica, and I'm um, off in a helicopter here, heading towards a small island. Uh, some sort of nature preserve, I believe. I'm very lucky. I'm actually seeing a preview of a, a new a new thing, so I'm not really sure what it is, but uh, I've heard they've spared no expense. Well, without further ado, let's go ahead and give you the Twitter poll results from last week. Listeners were asked, which of these hashtag Animaniacs cartoons is the best one featuring a king. Hashtag Animaniacast Bowl. 15% said the three Muscawanas. 23% said Sir Yaxalot. 62% however said it was King Yako. Who is the king of this bowl? Well, that's it for me. Now off I go and oh, I believe we're about to land. So off to the studio with this week's poll results. All right, so that was our; those were our poll results right there. Uh, king mm. Yakko took. King Yakko was the king of yeah. that uh, poll. Uh, <laughs> you just can't. He is the king. <laughs> and what do you guys think, uh, Kelly? What What of those three did really stood out? What's your favorite uh, King episode of Animaniacs? I'm gonna have to go with Sir Yax a lot because that's the one where I'm always going the dragon, the dragon, the dragon. <laughs> mm-hmm. And well, it, somebody please stop this man from yelling the dragon. <laughs> and then, you know, go, going and it's magic. Mm-hmm. I love I love quoting that one. That was 
It's always been one of my favorites. It is very uh, quotable. Nathan, what about you? Sir yaks a lot as well. It's the only one that features Pinky in the brain of those three, I believe. So Yeah, there you go. <laughs> well, I'm going to go with the winner of this one. I'm going to go with King Yakko. Uh, I really like the strong connections with that episode to uh, Duck Soup. And uh, I just I, I just really like that one. You know, <laughs> Yakko is it's a, a strong full Animaniacs episode, because that one is the only segment, I think, of that one, yep. right? Well, let's go ahead and get into our Twitter uh, question for this week. And Nathan, what is our question? All right, this week's question is best variable verse. Ooh, another round one of two. these. This is either round two or three. Is it just round, round two? Round two. Okay, round two. Pretty sure. I'm going <laughs> to say round two. Round two. Round two. Fight. Um, we have Chicken Chow Mani. Mm-hmm. Eisenhower Mamie, mm-hmm. that was today's. That was that. There's Come Home Shaney uh-huh. and Miss Selaney. Miss Selaney. Those are your choices, folks. Which one of those puts a smile on your face the most? Yes, and you vote for it. <laughs> you vote for it. And, and I'll give you even a bigger smile. <laughs> and you can vote for it by going over to twitter.com slash animaniacast or simply search on Twitter for hashtag animaniacast poll and you can make your voice heard. Well, before we get to our contact information, uh, I just want to put a quick plug out there for an idea that I have. Ooh. I don't like ideas. Yeah, this this should be interesting, and, and it may crash and burn completely, but um, <laughs> we have a couple of Animaniacs storybooks from back in the day. These feature Yakko, Wacko, and Dot on two different adventures. One of them is uh, in a wax museum, and the other one is them and a bunch of dogs. I believe one is called Hounded, and the other one is called Meltdown at the Wax Museum or something like that. Hmm. Well, anyway, I'm looking for people who might be interested in helping the show out. If you do an impression of Yakko, Wacko, or Dot, and you think you're pretty good... Send us an email, animaniacast at retrozap.com, and uh, you know, hey, let's see what we can do. We're gonna we're gonna try to put this sucker together, and uh, you don't have to be a perfect uh, sound alike, but you should be. <laughs> you don't have to be, but you you should. No, I'm kidding, <laughs> kidding. Uh, you know, we'll 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 try this out, and uh, who knows? Maybe someday in the future, just maybe, we can make your voice heard. Yes, <laughs> and th- and this this uh, call out goes especially out to uh, Rob Paulson, Jess Harnell, and uh, Tress McNeil. If you're listening, yeah, please go ahead. <laughs> you probably could do pretty good impressions. You probably I could do pretty good, you know. So, but I mean, if you're not the best, then we won't use you. <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. Send in your send in Hello. your voice. You might beat out Rob Paulson. <laughs> <laughs> Let's get right over to our contact information, uh, Nathan. Where can people find you online? Hey, I'm on Twitter, folks. Django FT, that's me. <laughs> and Kelly, how about you? Twitter, Yoda Princess, or email Kelly at BigShinyRobot.com. Very awesome. Okay, well, you can also find us on Twitter, on Facebook, on Instagram, and various other things. And, of course, you can send us an email, which, again, is AnimaniCast at RetroZap.com. And speaking of RetroZap.com, there's a ton of awesome articles and awesome podcasts that you should listen to, such as the ArgCast, Beltway Banthas, Bruise and Blasters, The Deuce Cast, Movie Show, Doomcast, Kanata's Castle, The Sandcrawler, Skywalking Through Neverland, Starship Sabres and Scoundrels, Talking Apes TV, Techno Retro Dads, The Trade Federation, and We Know Nothing. <sighs> I think I got all those out. Okay, good. So... <laughs> Uh, with that, I think it's time to go. So we will be back next week with a episode dedicated completely to uh, Ben Vereen. No, no, no. To to Pinky, Pinky the Brain. Pinky the Brainy. Yes. <laughs> uh, and until then, uh, this is Joey for Nathan and Kelly. Good night, everybody. Good night. Good night, everybody. 
This podcast is not endorsed by Warner Brothers or Amblin Entertainment and is intended for entertainment and information purposes only. Animaniacs, the Warner Brothers logo, all names, pictures, and sounds of the Animaniacs characters or any other Animaniacs related items are registered trademarks and or copyrights of Warner Brothers, Amblin Entertainment, or their respective trademark and copyright holders. All original content of this podcast is the intellectual property of the Animaniacs unless otherwise indicated. Don't worry, kids. It's almost over. 